What's that? They're negative. They're negative. So they got a negative in common. That's a really important thing to notice. Okay. So they got a negative in common. They got a y in common. Anything else? Eight, they have an eight in common. So let's take out all of those things, especially if this is negative. That's actually something we're going to talk about today. If this first guy is negative, it makes our life a lot easier if we just back up that negative. Because then inside this needs to be positive. So you got a negative? Negative eight y. times something needs to give us negative 32y squared. No, right? I already called it. I did it. You can't click it. Yeah. Fine. Negative 8y times something needs to come out to be negative 32y squared. What is that thing that you're going to multiply negative 8y by? A 4. A 4. I'm going to y as well. I can get the y squared, so get it from the y. Okay, so just you know, double check in your head. Yeah, that works out. What are we going to multiply it by? Multiply negative 8y by to get negative 24y. 3 and positive 3. Yeah. That's right. Negative 8y times 3 is negative 24y. Okay. All right. The sooner this next thing that I say gets just like tattooed on your brains, uh, the easier it will be in the future forever. The big thing we're about to do, and there's a, there's a big reason why we can do this, is we have something times something else is equal to zero. For in this instance, this is like A, this is like B. You've got a thing times another thing. You've got two things being multiplied together, right? That makes sense? Two factors here. So if two things multiply together to make zero, or three things, or four things multiply to make zero, then what can we say about them? <coughs> One of them is absolutely zero without a doubt. If the product is zero, then there is no getting around the fact that one of them has to be zero. Okay? So that's what we say. Next, we say that this absolutely has to be equal to zero, or this, without a doubt, has to be equal to zero. If one of those is not equal to zero, then this could it possibly be true? You could it possibly multiply two things together that, are, that one of them isn't zero, or neither of them is zero, and you get zero. Here we solve y divided by negative 8 on both sides. 0 divided by negative 8 is 0. Subtract 3 on both sides. Divide by 4. There you go. important that one side of this is zero. We're going to have lots of equations in the future where one side is not zero and we need to get it to be zero. And the reason is, for example, if I say something times something equals five, that's meaningless. That doesn't help me at all. I can't say something like this. I can't say that A is five or B is five. There's no reason why A or B has to be five. But when we multiply two, two things and get zero, one of these has to be zero. Does that make sense? See the difference between those two things? Okay. It's really common in these first uh, stages of learning to solve quadratics to uh, factor one side, but forget that the other side has to be zero, and then set each thing equal to whatever the other side is. Okay. It's a really common mistake. It'll set you up to do that, in fact. So just don't fall for that. Make sure you get one side to be zero. Okay, another question? Another question. Whenever you feel like we're ready, we'll start the little review quiz. Yeah? 21 and 9.5. 21 9.5.
were to say there was like a step number one, it would be, well, make sure one side is zero. That's really important. That's done, right? One side is already zero. Two, now that one side is zero, what's the next thing we're going to do? So that's with an F. Fact. We're going to factor the quadratic. Here, what do we know about these two numbers? Multiply to make negative 30. Negative is important, so it makes negative 30. So the first off, first off, if you're going to multiply to make a negative number, what's something you know about those two numbers? One of them is negative, the other one's positive. That's a good place to be, to know that. All right, so there's 30 factors in quite a few different ways. Right? Yeah? 10 and negative 3. Okay. Just double check, make sure that it works out. Uh, I got n times n is n squared. n times negative 3 is negative 3n. 10 times n is 10n. And 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. Looks got us really, really close. Except we got a positive side. So what you What's that? What would you make this? Yeah, there's a little tip when you're factoring these, these quadratics. If, it, if you go and check it and, and this guy comes out to be the opposite of what you want it to be, you want it to be negative 7 is positive 7, just switch the signs of the numbers that you picked. Okay. So switch this to a negative, that to a positive, that'll switch, that'll switch, this. I'll switch this just confirms. We got negative, positive, a negative 10, positive 3, and that does make a negative 7. Right? All right. So step two is down to be factored, the quadratic. Next. Okay. So it's very important that it equals zero. Then we factored it, very genius, very clever. We made it in the form of one number times another equals zero. Okay. It's clever because now that it's a product equal to zero, now what can we say? Multiply together to make zero. So for sure, what? One of them is zero. So we set each factor equal to zero. And minus 10 equals zero, and plus 3 equals zero. Just a little or there. Solve each of these equations, n equals 10, or n equals negative 3. These are both solutions. You put them here, you're going to get zero. You put them there, you're going to get zero. That's what's kind of neat. And you put 10 in there, 10 squared, minus 7 times 10, minus 30, 100, minus 70, minus 30. That's 30, minus 30, yeah, minus zero. By taking that, factoring it, and setting each factor equal to zero, we found two numbers. If you plug them in for here, either one of them. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Is there probably a question about this or just throw me a new number? <coughs> or be like, or you're just ready to get started. Yeah. Yeah. 19. Okay. Okay, so it says factor out the greatest monomial factor. Just find the biggest thing that we can take outside the parentheses 
that could in theory be distributed back in and get the original thing. Okay. Parentheses here are binomial means. There's going to be just this one thing in there that's going to get distributed and give you the original. So what's the biggest thing you could take out of the parentheses? What do they have in common? They have what? They have an S. They have an S squared in common? Nope. S is the biggest factor of S that you can take out. Now how about, uh, do they have any number factors that you can take out? A four in common or a two in common or anything like that? No. We got a three here. And a 16, 16 is four times four, 16 times one is eight times two. There's no three factors in there. So just an S. So what does that leave here? S times what? Three S to the third plus what? Number 16, 16. S times 16 gives us the 16. Sometimes there are no number factors in common. Sometimes there's just nothing in common. There's nothing you can factor out. It's always a good idea to check. Before you start factoring into two sets of parentheses, always check and see if there's something you can factor out. Be like step number one of factoring, I would say. Right. Other questions? What? Number 22, 22. 22. No one right here. Can you factor out a common monomial? Let's just factor out that thing that can be distributed back in and give you the original thing. So what do they both have in common? Let's just look at the numbers first. What number of factors do they have in common? Three. How many m's do they have in common? Two. So it's m squared. Three times three will give you nine. m squared times m to the fifth. That's two factors of m. Five more factors of m for a total of seven factors of m being multiplied together. And a negative one. Sometimes those things are one or negative one that seems to get uh, a little bit of trouble when we're first learning how to do this. But don't think, don't, don't, don't forget that if you if you need to get negative three m squared, and this is three m squared, there needs to be a, a one or negative one there. Not a zero. If it's a zero, that's just eliminates it. It's no good. Well. Let's, uh, I'm going to come around and collect pink slips and then otherwise put everything away and let's get ready to do a little review exercises. Okay. Again, uh, just indicate any mistakes that were made or just by the face of snakes that worked that you said correctly. Um, you remember from the quiz that we've taken on this chapter, a really common mistake to make here is to start distributing all of this stuff over into these parentheses. Mm -hmm. We're actually supposed to do what? Combine like terms? What, what about this negative here? What is that all about? Or what do we do with it? Danielle? Subtract. Subtract all this? Stuff, right? Yeah. So x squared plus 3x cubed minus 2 minus 2x cubed minus negative x squared, so that's positive x squared, minus a negative 3, so that's a plus 3. And now, as we said before, combine like terms. Here's x squared and x squared, that's 2x squared. Okay, got uh, some cubes, 3x cubed and negative 2x cubed x cubed, and negative 2, and 3, plus 1. Okay. So we go x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1. If you want to write them in order of descending powers, we can do it that way. Okay. So remember the, <coughs> that negative there, or a plus sign there, is important. It doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean ignore it and just multiply these two parentheses together. 
means subtract everything that's in this parentheses or add everything that's in this parentheses to the other. Combine like terms. Multiplication would be nothing here. It's just two parentheses right up next to each other, and that would indicate multiply. When you see something right next to a parentheses, with no other symbols or anything like that, it's just multiply these things together. <coughs> like this, we have two parentheses right up next to each other. This would indicate, this is shorthand, or multiply these two things together. Distribute the three x squared to both of these things. Three x squared times x squared is what? Three x to the third or the fourth? X squared times x squared, that's x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. And we distribute the negative four. Oh, sorry, we didn't distribute the 3x squared to the 5. What's 3x squared times 5? 15x squared. 15x squared. <coughs> get the negative 4 times the x squared. Negative 4x squared. Negative 4, negative 4 times 5. Negative 20. Like terms. Plus 11x squared. Factor out the largest, the greatest common monomial factor. So we can just take it piece by piece. What is the largest number factor they have in common? Seven. How many x factors needed do they have in common? Mm -hmm. One x factor. So we take out one x factor. Now inside the parentheses, we're pretty confident, we've taken out the largest monomial factor that we can. 7x times what, Bryce? What do we need here? So that when we multiply 7x by this, we get 14x squared. That's what looks good. 2. 2. Anything else? We take this x times something. Oh, x. So we need an x. Good. And that thing. What are we right here? 7x is right there. Seven. 7. 7 times 7 is 49. We know we have taken up the largest or greatest monomial factor because there's nothing in common here. If there's something else in common here, we have to take that out too. And just keep taking out factors until it's all done. Solve the following polynomial equation by factoring. Uh, what's like secret hidden step number one we always want to make sure of before we even start? These up there. What was a very important thing that I said, Danielle? One side equals zero. One side equals zero. Very, very good. All right, so it's very important that one side equals zero. That is done. One side does equal zero. There it is, zero. So what next? Factor that quadratic. Two sets of parentheses. Just before that, well, I mean, yeah, before we set up these two parentheses, we want to double check and make sure that we can't take any single factor out, like they don't have a two in common or an x in common, which they don't. x, x, so there's x times x is x squared. And we need these two numbers. These two numbers are going to multiply. And when we multiply them, we should get what? 
negative 2. Not a lot of options there to get negative 2. Right? Positive 1 and negative 2, or negative 1 and positive 2. Cameron, is this correct? Did we capture this correctly? Not sure? How can we check? Probably the correct for the next step, but how do we know that this is correct for this? That's the factor form of that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So, Cameron, how do we? Check and see if these are correct. This is the correct factorization of this. X squared, so x times x. x times x, yeah. And then x times negative two. two. Right. Mm -hmm. So that gives us x squared minus two x so far. And then distribute the one. Distribute the one again. We get x squared minus x minus two. That's exactly what we're supposed to get. So yeah, we factored it correctly. That's important to be sure of. Now we have something like we can call that A and call this B. We got one, two things multiplied together, and it comes out to be zero. So, Courtney, what can we say next? What can we do next after we have written it as something times something equals zero? Figure out what x. How? Well, okay. So you're you're saying just look at it and figure out what x is. Based on what? Like, how do you figure out what x is? Okay, so this, not x though, right? Not x is zero, but this whole thing is zero. And then this is, you know, that, that equation is almost too easy to be solving. But we subtract one on both sides. We set this one equal to zero and solve for x. There we go. Those are the two solutions. We could just, for instance, take negative one. Put it right in here. Negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 2. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Minus negative 1 is plus 1. Minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Check it out. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Concerns? Pass them back. Make sure you scored it. Scored it out of how many? 16, right? Each problem is worth four. Okay. So, factor. Factor that one, right? The best way to do it is to try to do it and not hope that you don't have to do it. Go ahead and get started. Now, something that's important here is, if I were to say factor 
is 25. What would that look like? 5, five, five, five times 5. Okay. This is the key thing. We take it and break it down into something times something. And that's it. Not, not, uh, it's not 2 times 10 plus 5, right? That doesn't exist. It's something times something, that's it. No more adding, no more subtracting, it's purely this thing times this other thing. So we're writing this quadratic as something times something, that's it. There's nothing else left. There's no leftovers, there's no remainders, okay? You can factor it perfectly. For that to happen, we have an x times an x is gonna give us x squared, all right? And now we need to plug in here two numbers that multiply to make two, and add to make three, right? This is the rule we've been using. Uh, if you have not been in the practice of, of multiplying this out and checking yourself, or, or you feel like you are incapable of doing something like that, uh, it would behoove you to get into that practice. Okay? If you're not doing that, or, or you have ignored that and, and felt like, ah, that's not that important, it's going to make today difficult, okay? But as long as you can multiply these two parentheses together to double check, well, you're in good shape. You're ready to go for today. Wanted to do what we wanted to do, right? That, that double checking looks like this. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 2 is 2. And we got our x terms to combine. second, but I'm just going to interject before this is the secret step number one of factoring. If you look for, among all the terms, if there's anything that they all have in common that you can factor out, that they all have something in common you can factor out. A what? Five. A five. A five. A five. <laughs> we got x squared plus 5x plus 6. We factor out that 5. Strip that five back in, we get exactly what we started with. And now you have this guy right here that you can factor like normal, like we did with the previous one. It has to be the same. So just wanted to put that out there. Continue. Okay, so we get the common factor of five. It's taken out, so let me talk about a couple things I've been seeing. Stop talking, please. Some had a five X out like this and well, we can't really do that, so I, I don't really know what's right, but maybe you, you had something like this, okay? If I were to multiply this together, I get 5x squared plus 25x. Things are looking good. And when I do 5x times 6, I get 30x, okay? 30 doesn't have an x factor, so there's not an x factor that they all have in common, so I can't take out an x. This is no. Don't do that, can't do that. Okay. So it, there's, there's no x factor that comes out, so all the, the x parts stay the same as they were uh, from the beginning. Okay. Um, okay, for a second, let's just kind of come up with the five. Don't let it distract you from what you're doing. You're factoring this quadratic right here. Okay. So ignoring the five, you can, complete, you can completely factor this without even thinking about the five. Okay. So, we need to factor this, two parentheses. So when we multiply it together, we get x squared plus 5x plus 6. What will those factors look like? Any yeah. x plus 2 and x plus 3. x plus 2, x plus 3. x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. 3 and 2 add together to make 5, so we get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. But if this Final answer. When I multiply those together, what will I get? Out. What will I get if I multiply these two?
two things together. Find that 3x and that 2x, you get the 5x, right? We get this. I hope so, right? Because that's what we were factoring. I'm going to multiply together and get exactly that thing. Okay. But if this is your final answer, then what you get is that. Is that what we started with? What did we start with? Huh? Right. So this can't be factored form of that, because it doesn't come out to be the same. Right? We need that factor of 5. So. so when I said ignore the 5, I didn't mean like it goes away. But we don't have to think about it when we factor x squared plus 5x plus 6. But that factor of 5 needs to be there, otherwise it won't come out to be the same as the original. So factor out the 5, then we factor this guy, just like we normally would and keep that factor of 5 on the outside. The, the ultimate end would be when we have it written as you know, three things times each other or, or a factor of things, and when we multiply them back together, we get the original. If you don't get the original, you did something wrong. You left something out, you picked the wrong number, something happened. You need to go back and check your work. So always check by multiplying together, see if you get the original. Is, what jumps out to you immediately as being different about this quadratic? There's a negative out in front where, uh, well, typically there's not one. There's a positive usually. Okay. So you absolutely can try and deal with this you know, by doing this with a negative x and a positive x. So when you multiply those together, you get the negative x squared. Okay. There's, a, there's a way I think is better. It's one little extra step, and I think less work in the long run. Instead of doing that, it kind of messes everything up. The first thing we'll do before we get started is take a negative out, factor negative out, and then when we do that, if we factor negative out, the first thing here, this will be positive now. It's like it was before, like we're used to. What would come next then? What would this next term be if we factored out a negative? Negative 4x. Negative distributed in here gives you uh, negative times negative is positive 4x. And lastly, negative 20. Okay, so you got the negative out there, just like in the previous example we had a 5. We just carry that negative along, it just tags along uh, on the left side there, reminding us that at the end, like if we were going to multiply this all together, we would distribute the negative back in there. Then we factor just what's inside now with a positive in front of x squared rather than negative. Give you a second to work on that. Okay. Uh, so I see a lot of this, which is great, it's perfect, and then uh, this is even more good. X times x is x squared. Okay. And I see a lot of writing and erasing, writing and erasing, writing and erasing, which is also good, because it turns out that you cannot factor this. It's unfactorable. Right? Uh, which if, I mean, if you got to the point where you felt like, I don't know what to do, I, I, I've tried all these different numbers, it doesn't seem to be working out, then you came to the right conclusion. It doesn't work out. There's only so many ways to multiply to make 20, and no combination of positive and negative numbers will add up to negative 4. Okay. So taking out a negative is the most we can do. Uh, 
Uh, how about if we make it just instead of negative 4x, how about just negative x? Make it just negative x. And factor that. be sure the, the correct answer here is if we multiply this out it comes to be the original. Okay? Not so much that this times this is negative 20 and this plus this is negative 1 but if we multiply this out it comes out the same as the original. Okay? How do I know that uh, 75 is 3 times 25? Because when I multiply 3 times 25 I get 75. That's so when I multiply x minus 5 times x plus 4, I should get x squared minus x minus 20. And when I distribute the negative back in there, I should get x squared, negative x squared plus 4x plus 20. Okay? We can check and distribute here. We get the negative in front. But when we multiply these together, we get negative, or we get x squared uh, plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. Negative times x squared minus x minus 20. Same as that on a good track here. <coughs> negative times x squared is negative x squared. Uh, positive, that's, we change that, so this should be a positive just x. Okay. Comes out to be positive x and positive 20. So, the test strategy here, factoring out a negative is a good idea. If we factor out a negative, when this this leading coefficient here is a negative. The, the coefficient in front of the highest power of x. When it's negative, factor out a negative, and now you're back to the first thing is positive, and everything is like normal. Okay. I'll give you another one like that. Negative x squared. say factor out a negative to start with. The next thing you write, probably not the most helpful thing if you write this. Okay? And let's look at why. Because I think what's happening is, is uh, if you write this, you're just putting this negative right here, and then you're just factoring this. I think that's what's happening for most. That's not correct. How did this start? It started out negative x squared plus 3x plus 54. If I think of it like this, if I distribute that negative, now I've got negative x squared minus 3x minus 54. That's not what we started with. Okay. So what you should do before you jump to here and, and start getting confused, factor out the negative. Just write the step like before you would distribute. What it would look like before you distributed the negative into the parentheses. It would look like x squared, right? So what would be next? What would this next term be here? So when I distribute the negative, 
I get 3x. Um, negative 3x. Negative 3x. And Bryce, last? Um, What's the last guy? So we come out with 54. So next we have the, the negative outside there, and like, this part, color it purple. Like this purple part is going to get factored, and it's going to be the exact equivalent to this. So these parts are going to be exactly equal, this purple thing and this purple thing. The negative. Is this kind of up by itself? It's waiting to like get distributed into everything, right? But we have separated it out. We factored it out so that we can make factoring this purple part a little easier. It's easier because this in front of here is positive rather than negative. Maybe factor that negative out. So don't forget to write that in between step. If you just go right to negative and two sets of parentheses, I think you're missing it. You're, you're getting confused about the sign. And you'll find that if you do it that way and you multiply it together, you probably will not get what you had originally, which is very important. If you don't get what you got originally, then you must not have done it correctly. So given that we're factoring x, factoring x squared minus 3x minus 54, we find a way to factor that. Anybody have that? X minus what was it? Nine. Nine. Okay. We multiply this out. Okay. We'll we'll leave the negative alone for a second. We'll, we're just checking now. We think this is the answer. We're just double checking. X times x is x squared. X times six is six x. Negative nine times x is negative nine x. Negative nine times six is negative fifty four. Combine these together in the like terms. Minus 3x, minus 54. Great, that's exactly what this was before we factored it. If we distribute the negative back in, we'll get negative x squared plus 3x plus 54, just like the very, very original thing. So yeah, that's correct. Why is it correct? Because when we multiply it together, we get the original. That's what I want you to keep in mind, because that is what's going to make it possible for you to factor this new kind of a quadratic. Okay. Why, how, do I, how am I sure that it is correct? How am I sure that I factored it? Because when I multiply it together, I get the original. When I multiply it together, I get the original. Okay. Not because of a shortcut or a trick, or because when this adds to this and that. No, it, when you multiply it together, you get the original. And if you check it that way, you don't have to worry about anything else. When you multiply it together, it comes out to be the original. Did it correct? Okay. So, so having a negative out front, that's the first thing, like the first type of a quadratic we would see in like 9.6, which is where we start today. So one thing would be, one strategy would be factor out a negative first. Factor out a negative first, if your first term is negative. And you have the negative taken out, it's outside the parentheses, and inside you start with a positive like we've been used to for, for so long. Now, read the objectives up here. This is the kind of quadratic refactoring where basically A is something other than 1. We've been used to so far A being something, well, being 1. 1x one squared, blah, blah, blah. And I've got 6x squared, blah, blah, blah. What do you do about it? Okay. Well, a couple of examples ago. Uh, what we did was factor it out, right? We factored out a 5 so that this was back to being a 1, and then we factored it like normal. The problem with 
this one is that not all of them have a factor of 6 so that we can factor it out. They don't all have factors of 6. So what do we do about it? Okay, keep in mind, we're going we're gonna to factor this. And if we did it correctly, how will we know that we factored it correctly? I said it a few times just before I wrote this down. If you multiply it out, you get the original. That's how you know that you did it correctly. Okay. So let's work this one together. So think about the whole time you're doing this, think about when I multiply this together, what am I trying to get? What am I trying to get? So when I multiply these two, these first two things together, what am I trying to get? Six S squared. Normally we try to get S squared, but now we're trying to get six S squared. What two things could we multiply together and get 6s squared? 3s and 3s and 3s. Multiplying them here, 2s. 3s times 2s is 6s squared. Uh, but is there any other way to multiply two things and get 6s squared? Just ask them what would this have to be? 6s. You can see why we've waited until now to, to throw this out there because now there's more work, more possibilities involved. 2 times 3, 1 times 6. If it's another number like uh, 16, we could have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Okay. Or it's 2, sorry. Yeah, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. So we, we get more possibilities. It's not just straightforward s times s now. You don't just fill in the parentheses with an s and an s and then go from there. So 3s times 2s, 6s squared, that part works out perfectly well. Okay. Um, so we're, we're guaranteed to get our at 6s squared like we want to get. Okay. Let's bring that. Also, when we multiply this number times that number, whatever those numbers come out to be, we know that this times that has to come out to be what? <coughs> this number times that number should come out to be what? Negative 5. Actually, the, the only two numbers without s's on them, right? There's only one combination of a number times a number, and so that must come out to be negative 5. Okay. So, Throw it out there. What what can we multiply together to get negative five? One and five. One and five. One. one of them has to be negative, so plus one minus five. Okay. That might work. Let's try it. Let's multiply it together. You got three times two, that's six s squared. You got three s times negative five, that's negative fifteen s. And 1 times 2 is 2s. So did we find it? Have we factored it correctly? Why not? It doesn't get this negative s like we want. It gives us what? Negative 13s. Negative 13s. All right, that is out. That whole combination didn't work out. Well, let's set it up again. 3s, 2s, definitely going to give us 6s squared. Okay, and we need some kind of combination of a one and a five, and a, you know, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. We just want to do it in such a way that we don't have a positive 1 with 3s and a negative 5 with 2s because we already tried it, it didn't work out. So what's another possibility? What can we throw in there? Negative 1 positive 5, let's put a negative 1 right here. And a positive 5 here, that's certainly another option, so let's try it out. 3s times 2s is 6s squared, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. We knew that was going to happen. 3s times 5 is now positive. 15s. 
negative 1 times 2s is now negative 2s. So notice we get the same numbers we did before, only now the, the signs have switched. Now we get positive 13 instead of negative 13s. So that didn't work out. That's OK. combination of 1 and 5 with a positive and a negative, but not this way and not that way. Try all the combinations. Any What's that? Then it would get negative 5. If you did like both negative or both positive. If you did both negative, the problem with both negative is you positive 5, that's what you said? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we don't want that, we want negative 5. If we did both positive, no. Both negative, no, that would come out to be positive 5, not negative 5. We definitely need one of them to be negative. So, do you think it would be different if we put a, say, negative 5 right there and a positive 1 right there? It's got to be different because now, let's see, this one, 3 was multiplied by 5, giving us 15. Now it's 3 times 1. So, it doesn't give us 15 like it did before. So 3 times 3s three times 1 is 3s. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10s. Is that right? Did that work out? Didn't work out. What were we supposed to get? <coughs> negative s. What did we get? We got negative 7s. You can see why I've just been crossing these out so we can be sure that we don't try that again. That's not what I want. Danielle, you have something? So if you do um, 3s plus 5, then 2s will minus 4. Switch the signs. Let's switch those signs. s plus 5 and 2s minus 1 s minus 5 s. And we get a 6s squared, we get our negative 5, we get 3 times negative 1 is negative 3s, 5 times 2s is positive 10s. See what happens when we switch the signs, we just switch the signs of the 2s terms and we wind up just with the opposite, right? We got negative 5s before, or negative 7s before, and now we get positive 7s. So that's something to keep in mind. If you just switch the, the signs, what will happen is the sign of this middle term will switch. It'll just become the opposite. So that is not working. That didn't start. Okay, so what we've accomplished something here with these four things. We have tried 3 and 2 to make 6, and then every other combination of anything that will make negative 5. We've had positive 1 and negative 5, negative 1 and positive 5, negative 5, positive 4, and positive 5, negative 1. And that's it. There's no more possibilities if we use 3s times 2s to get a 6s squared. So then where do we go? Where do we move on to from there? S and 2s, there's just no way to make it work. So, what can we try next? Can we try 2s and 3s? Uh, that's not a bad idea, except for I could take all these parentheses, all these pairs of parentheses, and just switch the order. You think that would change the end result? Oh, so, all right, we explored that and found out that's actually exactly what we've done. We would just switch the order of those. So, 3s, 2s, 2s, 3s. Not going to work. <coughs> Just 6s and s. 6s and 1s. Well, there's another way to make 6s squared. That's 6s and 1s. Okay. And now we're going to have to try all these positive 1, negative 5, negative 1, positive 5, and so on and so on and so on. Except for maybe now we've learned that switching the signs is only going to switch the sign of the middle term. 
Um, let's do uh, plus one and minus five. Let's see what happens. So we got s times six s is six s squared. Not surprising. One times negative five is negative five. Of course, that's how we're making these decisions so far. Then s times negative five is negative five s. One times six s is six s. Did that work out? Is that what we wanted? Is it kind of sort of close though? How is it sort of close? We put these together, what do we get? Right, so what do we get when we put these two together? The like terms, what do we get when we put them together? These two right here. Negative 30 plus? Well, we're not multiplying them, we're adding them together. Oh, just. Um, Oh, this one's negative. Negative 11. 6s minus 5s, or negative 5s plus 6s, takes us to a positive s. Yeah. Positive s. What do we want to get? Do we want to get positive s? No. What are we trying to get? 6s. Well, we want 6s squared here, but what, what do we want the s term to be? There. Negative s. We're getting positive s. Switch the signs. Remember how we switched the signs in those other ones? And it just switched the sign of the middle term. So if we switch the signs, right, we would like this to be a negative 6s and this a positive. So we'll switch these. We make that 5 a positive, 1 a negative. And we get a positive 5s and a negative 6s. And when we combine those, we get 6s squared minus s minus 5. So since when I multiply these together, I get 6s squared minus, six, or minus s minus 5. What's the conclusion? This is the factor form. Okay, just 9.6, please.